If you've ever had a dream, a very vivid dream, and you were woke up from the dream, you're like, that was more real than this physical world. That's another dimension. That would be the experience of the soul, not of the body. Hi, my name is Steve Martile, and in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about soul contracts. So I've had a couple conversations over the last few months with people about this and I have no evidence to prove that these exist, these soul contracts, but I will explain what I believe they are and how they work with the dynamic of physical 3D earth human beings like, and how it works with the dynamic of living on this planet. So the way to think of it is that you've got a soul essence energy that came in and is using this physical body as a means of you're expressing yourself on this planet in this experience and same with other people they've got souls that are expressing through this physical bodies to allow themselves to express themselves in the 3d experience at this point now the all that is god source the creator whatever name you decide to use energy unlimited being the universe this source this creator wants to experience all that is and the only way that that universe god can experience all that is is through all of us experiencing all that we are however on this planet we have free choice we have free will so we can decide to express our free will and express ourselves through the physical body in any way that we want we can damage our bodies we can be destructive to them it's entirely up to us what i my understanding is is that a soul contract would be the soul came into this dimension and if you think about it there are other dimensions now that type of experience is happening all the time even when you're awake but we're not aware of it again i can't prove any of this you have to tested it in your own experience but what i can tell you is that my understanding is that we came to this planet with a soul contract meaning we made an agreement that we were going to have certain experiences and have certain situations show up in our life so that we could experience growth and why is that happening because the all that is wants to experience all that is and the only way it can do that is through us so individually our soul made a choice to say i'm going to have this experience on this earth and then certain things are going to show up and then and I'm going to make some choices about what I decide to do. Here's how this becomes relevant to a practical reality. One of the things, questions that I got when we were looking and kind of piloting uh, United News Network, we were doing a piloting, maybe a potential season two, is we asked people to say, hey, what are your questions about manifestation so that we can answer them in season two? And one of the questions we got was, am I allowed to manifest for my children? Now, this is an interesting question. So basically, can you manifest for someone else? Here's my answer to that from a soul contract perspective. As long as what you desire does not interfere with your children's soul contract, because remember, they're individuated expressions or souls that have had their own contracts and their own agreements about what they want to experience. As long as you don't interfere with that, the best thing you can do as a parent is be a living example for them so that they understand what it means to manifest and create your life deliberately. They will get it if you do it and they will start creating for themselves. So that's something it's probably more beneficial for the children because then they see examples of what it means to create their life deliberately. You can't live someone else's life. You're here to live yours. Okay. So that's why I introduced this idea of soul contracts is because one other woman said to me, she goes, I have this friend of a family and their child has this mental disability. They're completely debilitated. They can't move. Not a zombie, but they just can't move. They're not physically expressive. And she said, what can I do to help setting an intention for that person? Person. And I said to her, how do you know that that physical person, which is a soul expressing through that physical person, didn't choose to have that experience? In other words, eons and eons of reincarnation, that soul was basically a very expressive soul in different physical incarnations and decided that because they don't have a very strong intuition or a strong sense of the sixth sense, they wanted to develop that in physical 3D earth. And because of that, what they decided was they wanted to be debilitated to the point where they weren't physically expressive so they could focus on mastery of those more subtle vibrations. How do you know that's not the case? I said, if that person came out and said, I need your help, 
or maybe not verbally, but some sort of telepathy. It was like, I need your help. And then you were to help them. That's different. You can set an intention that will help other people, of course, and obviously help the world. But just keep in mind that we all have different soul contracts with different agreements that we made about experiences that we want to have. And we all have free will. And that means is that you have free will, but it also means every other person on this planet has free will and you can't interfere with that. You can try. <laughs> but it might not be helpful to you. You're here not to live someone else's life. You're here to live yours. So focus on creating things that you want to create for yourself that will help other people. Yes, but don't interfere. It's just like, you know, I have my neighbor had sent to me once. She said, you know, well, get your book out here and get your book out there. And I'm like, I understand what she's saying. Get your book, market it out. I get it. But some people are not going to resonate and connect with the information in my book because they have a soul contract that basically won't even allow them or a limiting belief that won't even allow them to see it in this lifetime. And I'm okay with that because everyone has free will. Here's the other question that we got from that UNN series that I thought was related very nicely back to soul contracts is that the woman had said, my question is about manifesting. Do I let the universe bring what's best for me versus manifest my heart's desire, which is better. And when I heard that question, I had to read into a bit. And what I said to her was, if you feel that your desires, maybe you want to grow business, maybe you want to build a organic farm. I don't know what they are. If you believe that those things, the universe has something planned for you, in other words, which is never the case because you have free will. I've been saying that over and over. It's not like the universe is going to come to you and give give you all these things and say, you need to take this direction. No, no, it's your choice. The reason sometimes we don't take action and we're like, I'll just wait till the universe gives me what I need and I'll just stall. And this other thing that I want to create, you know, I'd love to make a million dollars. I'd love to do this other thing or I'd love to write books. But you know what? I'll just put that on hold right now because the universe is going to just serve it up to me. And no, like if you just are waiting, it may mean that you have a fear based belief system that is preventing preventing you from moving forward and taking action. I cover all of this in my second book, which will be releasing later this summer. But that fear based belief system is giving the idea that, you know what, I better wait and just do like the universe will give me what's right for me. You can honor your soul contract. Let's say you have a contract to come here and impact hundreds, millions of people in this planet. That was your agreed contract. You were going to do something. But over time, you know, you decide that you're not taking as much action around it. Maybe you're not meditating, adding light to the body, and you're just not resonating with that message anymore. But you have this other desire. That's the point. You have free will. You come here and decide what you want to do. There's no wrong choices. So in another side of this, another angle to this is if you decided to create something else like your own business or you wanted to be self-employed or travel the world, you might also be able to honor this other agreement that you have to impact humanity as well as travel the world. So what I'm saying is that there's no like one option fits all people. It's that if you're not taking action, it's very simple. You probably have a fear based belief system. If you take action, fear will get stimulated in you. If you don't have a fear based belief system, then you're going to do what's always the most your, your highest excitement. And that's the point. And if you don't want to do that, you can do that too, because you can choose to do whatever you want. But the key is that we're unlimited beings. So we can have as many experiences as we want. If you want to travel the world for 10 years and then decide, I want to spend more time contributing to humanity, then that's a free choice too. The fact that you don't move forward with that again tells me that there's probably a fear based belief system buried in your subconscious that maybe thinks it's a bad idea for you to do that. The other thing that I wanted to mention about soul contracts is that because we all have these agreements that we've made, like when you're looking to, for example, partner with someone in a business and you decide you're going to partner with this person right here and they have a limiting belief system that's preventing the expansion of that idea, then that's going to limit you. So instead of being attached to doing something with one person, that's why I said in my previous video, stay more general with your visualization. And then when you start acting throughout the day, maybe you find out that this person wasn't the best person to do that business with, but this person is be open, detached, and just focusing on where is your highest excitement? Maybe one phone call with this person or one coffee meeting with this person, you realize, wow, there's a lot of synergy. 
a lot of excitement, the ideas are flowing. Well, then that's the person that you're going to do the business with, not this person. And it's the same with partnering with people that you decide that you want to date or marry. You don't know that this is the right person for you, even maybe the person that you're with right now. Stay general, follow your excitement, see where that brings you, okay? Because you don't know what these other contracts, there may be, and I drew this guy here, this woman with a frowning face because they want to live in a limiting system. They don't want to be empowered. So you're an empowered soul. You're looking for other people empowered. And then you run into this person and you're like, they're kind of a negative Nancy. And then you realize that you've been spending this so much time, years trying to convince this person to travel the world with you or build these businesses or whatever it is that you want to create that excites you. And then you realize that they're not the right person. That's when you let go move to the next person, move to the next excitement, move to the thing that moves you. Okay. Awesome. I hope you found this useful and helpful. Again, just wanted to give a little bit of context because I have been getting more and more questions from people about this stuff and about how manifesting is a co-creative thing. And sometimes you're going to be co-creating with other people and sometimes they're going to be a match with you and sometimes they won't. I'll give you a really good example. I ended up working with a guy uh, over a year ago and after about eight months of working with him, I realized he had a limiting belief system specifically around the business we were creating together. And what was fascinating to me was that I attracted him. So obviously I had that shared limiting belief system at that time. It took me eight months to realize it. I had let it go. He did not. And then we move our separate ways. And then I end up finding another dance partner and life continues and it keeps going. Okay. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or a like. If you haven't bought my book yet, then uh, you can check it out on Amazon or on Barnes and Noble or on iTunes and or an audible because I have an audible version of it. And inside of it, if you're looking for meditations to help you visualize and start creating more of what you want, I do have one in the book, but you have to buy it to get it or the audible book. There's a QR code inside or I send you the landing page link. You can download that free meditation and then continue to hone in on your skills of creating what you want. Thanks again for watching, listening. My name's Steve and we'll talk to you next time.